Hi from Alina Digital. I'd like to introduce you the very basics of Arms Race 2 game. Let's get started. The game interface is very user-friendly. Flags in the top left indicate possible actions. For example, right now, I have United Nations points to propose and pass resolutions. Flags on the top right show regions with ongoing combat. Clicking on these flags moves the map to that region. Continent icons at the top can quickly take you to different parts of the world. At the bottom in the TV screen menu, you can find the latest 10 news updates about events worldwide. Keep an eye on them, sometimes they bring good news. Each year, you will receive three political points. You can use these points to make budget changes and form cooperation contracts. You can use political points to invest in researching new military, nuclear, or space technologies and to produce diplomats, military units, and spies. However, remember that the more you invest in research and production, the more you spend from your budget. Your gross national product, GNP, or budget increases annually by a random percentage, typically between 5% to 12%. It's essential to avoid a situation where your yearly spending exceeds your budget growth as this can lead to economic difficulties and make it challenging to win the game. In the budget window, you can observe the annual growth of your gross national product, GNP, and the total value for both sides. I've been investing heavily in nuclear technologies, and as a result, the opposing side has taken a substantial lead in terms of their economy. Both sides receive global consequences points annually, with some politicians able to provide extra points once every five years. Global consequences are crucial and can significantly impact the game. There are six consequences per decade, each offering substantial bonuses. The value of these bonuses increases with each passing decade. When a war begins, every global consequence randomly changes by plus one or minus one relative to its current value. Keep this in mind when deciding whether to initiate a war. However, be prepared for a battle once combat commences. On this screen, you can assess the comparison of combat firepower. The total firepower is the sum of various bonuses and military technologies. For instance, in this particular combat scenario in East Germany, my total firepower is 100, while my enemies is 45, giving me a 69% chance of winning the battle. Space technologies are divided into ground facility technologies and spacecrafts and launches. Developing these technologies earns you global influence points. Ground facility technologies increase global influence within your alliance, while space launches boost global influence globally. Additionally, completing ground facilities reduces the cost of space launches. In the United Nations, you earn one point in either domination, nuclear supremacy, global influence, or game scores. You also receive one point when an enemy military unit is destroyed in combat or when an enemy spy is eliminated by your spy network in any region. These United Nations points can be used to propose resolutions. For instance, I'm planning to propose a resolution for intervention in Angola. This will lead to an immediate increase in opposition in that country, allowing me to deploy my troops and support local revolutionaries. If successful, the country will join my sphere of influence and grant me its game score value. Another method to bring a region into your sphere of influence and gain its score is through a coup d'etat. To accomplish this, your influence in the region should be higher than 80, and the opposition in the country should also exceed 80. When these conditions are met, you'll have the option to initiate a revolution. If you successfully stage a coup in a country that is your direct enemy, such as the USA or USSR, you will win the game immediately. Elections occur every 10 years, during which you must select one minister for each of the economy, diplomacy, 
and military departments. It's crucial to align your ministerial choices with the same political orientation as the president or prime minister you want to elect. In my current example, I've chosen politicians who support Nixon. To expand your pool of politicians for selection, you can propose new reforms. This might incur one negative global consequence point in the next turn, but it will provide you with a wider array of politicians for future elections. Each politician has either liberal or conservative preferences. When you pick your ministers, you can determine the type of government you will have, liberal, conservative, or mixed. Each politician and government type offers unique bonuses and benefits. You have the ability to check your current government, as well as that of your adversaries, at any point in the game for reference and strategic planning. Thank you for watching. I encourage everyone to try the demo before making a purchase. Your feedback and comments are valuable. Farewell, and have a great time playing.